Hey, thanks for joining me for this video on white collar crime. And no, this is not going to be a how to, uh, but rather we're going to explore the concept of white collar crime, its characteristics, as well as some of the different types of white collar offenses. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by defining white collar crime. White collar crime refers to nonviolent, financially motivated offenses typically committed by individuals or organizations in professional or business settings. Now, these crimes are often characterized by deceit, fraud, or a violation of trust, and they're typically committed by individuals in positions of power or influence. Some of the common characteristics of white-collar crime include its nonviolent nature, which, unlike traditional crimes involving physical force or violence, White-collar crimes are typically carried out through some sort of deceptive practices, manipulation, or abuse of power with the primary goal of financial gain. White-collar crimes are also typically financially motivated. They're driven by financial incentives, and offenders typically aim to obtain some sort of financial benefits such as money, assets, or economic advantage through illegal or unethical means. White-collar crimes also take place in professional settings. These crimes are committed in a professional or business environment where individuals often have access to sensitive information, financial resources, or even positions of authority. Lastly, white-collar crimes can be extremely complex. They're often intricate and involve sophisticated schemes or strategies to deceive victims, conceal illegal activities, and even exploit vulnerabilities in systems or regulations. Now that you have a better understanding of white-collar crime as well as some of its characteristics, let's explore some of the common types of white-collar crime. The first one we're going to discuss is what's known as fraud. Now, fraud involves deceitful acts committed for personal or financial gain. Some examples of fraud include securities fraud, insurance fraud, identity theft, and Ponzi schemes. Now, in these cases, individuals will typically manipulate information, misrepresent facts, or engage in false pretenses to try to deceive victims and obtain money or assets. The next common type of white-collar crime is what's known as embezzlement. Now, embezzlement occurs when a person who is entrusted with managing or handling someone else's funds or assets unlawfully misappropriates or converts them for personal use. Now, this often happens in corporate settings, but it can also happen in nonprofits as well as public institutions. The next common type of white collar crime is money laundering. Now, money laundering involves a process of concealing the origins of illegally obtained money to make them appear legitimate. In order to engage in money laundering, individuals or organizations will engage in a series of transactions or activities uh, with the intent of disguising the illicit source of the funds, making it more difficult for law enforcement to trace money. Next, we have insider trading. Now, insider trading refers to buying or selling of stocks or other securities based on non-public material information. It involves exploiting privileged information that is not available to the general public and helps that individual gain an unfair advantage in financial markets. In fact, there is recent current events of politicians sitting on certain committees, having access to particular information about companies and using that information to engage in trades, which would fall under insider trading. The last type of white collar crime we're gonna explore is what's known as bribery and corruption. Now these oftentimes are separated, but we're gonna discuss them uh, together since they're often they're often go hand in hand. Bribery involves offering, giving, receiving, or soliciting something of value to influence the actions or decisions of individuals in positions of power. Corruption is the abuse of entrusted power for personal gain, often involving public officials or corporate executives. The intent of both bribery and corruption is very similar. Their differences are the means to which uh, that intent is carried out. With bribery, we're effectively looking almost as a quid pro quo, providing compensation in return for something, whether it's corruption typically deals with the abuse of power, so people in powerful positions using that authority to obtain some sort of financial benefit. As we wrap up this lecture, I want to emphasize that white-collar crime encompasses a, a large range of nonviolent, financially motivated offenses committed in a professional setting or a business setting. 
I hope you found this lecture on white collar crime to be interesting, and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.